This morning, someone dodged a very important question. Who? Oh. Me. Linda asked who hired me. Who hired you? I do not know. Hello, and congratulations to you, Jonathan. This is some really fantastic work here. I can see why they uh, chose you as the champ for this month's 11-second critique. My name is Keith Sinte, and I'll be doing your review today. Uh, this, is, this is really fun for me because I started out in traditional animation at Disney. Uh, then I was... Um, you know, I got to work on movies like Pocahontas and Mulan, Tarzan, Hunchback of Notre Dame. And so all this traditional stuff really gets to me. And I think you did a, a really great job on this. Um, more recently, I've worked at uh, Industrial Light and Magic on the Star Wars movies. I've worked you know, in visual effects now for, um, well, more, more than half my career as opposed to animation, traditional animation. Um, but... Uh, I, right now, I'm the animation supervisor at uh, Encore VFX for uh, Titans and several other shows that we do there. Um, so getting back to your work here, I think that uh, let's just first take a look at it. This is so cool. This morning, someone dodged a very important question. Who? Oh, me. Linda asked who hired me. Who hired you? I do not know. This morning, someone dodged a very important question. Who? Oh. Me. So Linda nice. Asked who hired me? Who hired you? I do not know. This is so. Um, the way you designed the characters for this is so fitting for the uh, the voice, and it matches up so well. I think that uh, character design. Uh, execution, animation, you put in all the effects and and all that stuff. I love seeing the, the charting back here um, flashing by. Uh, it's just it's, it's just tremendous stuff. Okay, so let's talk about all the great things that, uh, that I loved about this. So aside from, um, like I say, the character design, you have you have details in here, even within your line work, that are really nice you go from a thick line to a thin line here in this uh this smile crease the nasal labial fold there and i like the fact that you used a heavier line on the underside of the uh, eyebrow and around the eyes and even underneath the bag here you went with a heavier line as opposed to the rest of the you know the facial geography there and topography um it outlines it really nicely so I, th I think that's great. I think that you pretty much nailed the uh, the lip sync for me. I think it looks really nice. There is some some areas that could use some polish here and there. Um, one of the things is when he says, uh, "What's the word here?" Dodge the very important. Important. It's the P and important. When his cheek pops out, this is cool. And then you go into this really extreme, nice movement here, and then it pops out. This one I think you could disguise a little bit nicer to blend with what you have going on here let's get the same sort of effect but try and get a, a better blend and then when it then when he pops out of it then when he pops out of it um keep this you know this attachment intact so it, it blends better because this looks almost like a, a stray shape here when it goes into this P shape there, but um, you know it it only catches my eye because we see it uh, for a moment there. Someone dodged a very important. You can see go warp, warp. So if you could disguise that better and just do a, a little bit better blend on that, um, the staging of these two guys is really uh, ideal. I think it's so so clever how you managed to get in the you know, the subject line there, Linda, between them, you can see that this guy's definitely sort of a, well, it feels like anyways, an underling. You've arranged your background in such a way that you have <clears throat> these uh, tombstones almost pointing to these guys. It's really a, <clears throat> excuse me, sorry. It's really a neat thing to see that, you know, the way his, his body and this guy's body and everything sort of just points to this 
sort of a diminishing line. I mean, it's uh, it's really neat. The faces. So a lot of a lot of cool stuff going on in there. Um, the way that uh, your cuts work and having this reach up for the cigar and then continuing you know, continuing the movement here having him pull it out in this next shot works really well I noticed that and one of the things that I think that you accomplish with this is your your work with the arcs is really nice when he does his gestures as he's talking on and someone dodged a very important question oh me it's like he does this very subtle me and he have him tweak that thumb towards himself there me this is a strong key right here fantastic uh <clears throat> this looking underneath the lid the arc that you did here where he does gesture up and then down it's really nice me can tell you know what you're doing there um the cigar as it sits in his lip is just fun to watch the you really handled the overlap especially the tobacco in the end of it as it flops up and down and drags as his lip moves around and then you have this this cigar just sort of flailing skipping around here you did a nice cheat having it just hover in the air until it catches it again on his lip I mean, that's some really clever stuff. That thing kind of just sits out there until his lip catches it again, and then he brings it back down. Really wonderful. I I like both these characters. I can't decide which one I like more, and that's that's unusual because usually there's one that just feels stronger, but the, the design is so nice. I love the overlap on this guy, on the guy on the right there. His hair, when... Um... Too hard, man. Who hard you? There. Who hired you? His head moves. So his head does this stretch down. And then it comes back up again and it bounces his hair. So it's like his such a great um, handling and understanding of, of overlap and, and follow through there. Um, this little detail of when he blows out the smoke and the way his lips pull on the cigar. But when he blows out the smoke and the whole face just goes into this. One of the things I wish you had done um, is animate a little squash to stretch on the nose. The nose just feels a little bit soft for me and to, you know, should be feeling a little bit fleshier. So things like this, when he stretches his face, it's nice that you brought this up. Whoops. But you could bring this, his nostril crease up a little bit higher and get a little bit of stretch out of the nose. And definitely when he's, yeah, I mean, you don't have to overdo it, but some of these really broad shapes that you have really lend themselves to that nose moving. It almost like if you just, just think about and stop to look at the um, at the nose there, the nose sort of um, seems a little bit isolated from the rest of the, you know, like the cheek goes up and that lip goes up and the this lip goes up, this cheek goes up, this nose. It would be nice to see it just sort of bulge up a little bit. Been a good opportunity to add a little bit more life into the face. Oh, me. Even this bit here in the in this back profile, um, when he does this thing with his lips going down, his nose just kind of hangs up there, and all of this works so wonderfully. I just wish that the nose just dropped a little bit, like the lips you know, are, are pulling, pulling that uh, those nostrils down a little bit. Me. Linda asked, "Who hired me?" The eyebrows, I think you get away with um, the simplicity of them. And it's interesting that you don't even have actual hair on the eyebrows, you know, fur or anything to, to muddy it up. I, I kind of like that. I mean, it's a style choice, I think. And, and I think it works really well. And, and the fact that they're very much kind of together, there isn't a lot of – there's just enough for me of things like this when he does this ending bit and he pops his eye. Boink. And that whole um, fleshy thing kind of pops open and goes into that. I think that works really well. Um, small details, things I think that you could go back in and maybe rework a little bit of the the, the gun. 
wasn't there's something about the um how far he pulls the gun in like this you kind of don't have a choice because of uh um you know you want to i guess point at that guy next to you but i think that if you're going to do that bringing out this arm and this shoulder and maybe turning him just a slight bit more would help ease the feeling that his wrist is really cranked in order to in order to show that that gun you know instead of like this where you'd see let me see where you'd, whoops wrong way where you'd see the elbow kind of come out like if you brought your arm around like this your your forearm and, and elbow would come out a little bit more just to point it at the guy you know you're looking at next to you right now it looks like his arm stays here and the wrist you know kind of turns hard just a, it's a small detail but it would be nice to flesh that bit out there uh the the gun gets and i know it's hard to draw these things but you did a magnificent job there's just a little bit of um a volume change that uh could be ironed out a little bit more when it goes from this length into this to this just having that smoothed out just a little bit more i think um but overall i think that uh this morning, someone Gun looks good. a very important question. Who? Oh, me. Linda asked who hired me. Um, let's see. The, uh, the, like, okay, yeah, the overlap. I think that the, uh, when he says very, I kind of wish that there was a little bit of a head shake in there. A very, Im very important. Like a little very important. Very important, very important. Just a little bit of a waver up. I'm a big fan of Milk Call. And if you know anything about Milk Call, he was infamous for putting in those head shakes and, and things during dialogue. Um, I love it. I think it's fantastic when, when I see that stuff. Medusa or, you know, the, the butler from the Aristocats. Of course, Shere Khan from Jungle Book. Um, look those guys up if you haven't seen it and just watch their their heads when they're doing dialogue. And I think, the, I mean, this guy's really reserved and I understand that he's not a big broad character, but a little bit of a variance in there when he says that line would, would sweeten that up. And someone dodged a very important question. Very important question. Who? Oh, me. Linda asked who hired me. That's the, that's my favorite part here. This whole section when he says me. Linda asked who hired me. Um, and then this guy. I'm not sure what's going on with his thing there. If that's like a cry or a cheat. It's a friggin' cool thing, whatever it is. Something I probably wouldn't have thought to put in there. I don't know what that is. It's a little detail. Maybe it's rain. Maybe it's tears. Maybe it's nothing. Who hired you? I do not know. This morning. But I love it. Uh... I, I don't know, you know, where you found the time to do all of this, but uh, absolutely <laughs> so much fun and, and a joy for me to see this. Um, yeah, so I think that basically overall, you didn't give me much to uh, to really, you know, go on uh, or, you know, help you with because... A lot of it is already there. I think um, adding some squash stretch to the nose, maybe um, punching up the uh, the fleshiness of these and thinking of them as the three-dimensional objects. And then maybe they, they cross over this way a little bit more and trying to draw these eye bags as three-dimensional and thinking of them as three-dimensional without putting shadows in there necessarily, but just the way your, your line um, forms and how things sit on top of, of each other, you know, how the... Uh, how they interact or, or, or whatever with, uh, you know, with the, with the bits around them, um, kind of trying to fold this eye, eye bag around underneath there would be, would be nice to see. So we just feel some, some volume and fleshiness of those, of those eye bags. Um, I think that, uh, the ears are a cool choice. Um, Yeah, I think that's uh, about all I have for you. The I thought about the umbrella possibly moving a little bit. I didn't want it to get distracting. Because um, for a while I was like thinking, 
So you you do you move the umbrella with with when his hand moves here, which is kind of which is cool. So I'm so used to CG now um, that sometimes I th I look at stuff like that and I think, well, you know, you could add a little bit of movement to it, but again, this is traditional animation, so we kind of left those things alone, didn't we? Well, I feel bad for Linda, but I feel good for you. You did a fantastic job for the uh, on this and. Um, it's really been a pleasure taking a look at your work and, and going over it, and uh, you should be very proud of yourself. I think you, uh, you nailed this. So good luck to you in the future, and um, take care of yourself.